decide on a topic? No, sir. <laughs> uh, these these partials are so difficult and so complicated. You know that uh, according to the Rambam, all of this event of the three people coming to visit um, who, uh, Abraham. Abraham, who were seen in a vision, in a dream, to him. Why would the Torah describe it that way? Because it was in the day. Because what? No, no. They like, they, you know. The right, they're, they're presumably malachim, right? Mm -hmm. According to the Rambam, a person never sees malachim. Only in a vision, in a dream. Mm -hmm. You can see malachim. It's a way of God communicating with people. No child in elementary school would like that one. No. Hmm. But it sounds so much nicer. Yeah. I, I, I don't like it either. <laughs> oh. I this pasuk number one is in fact the place where the Rambam and the Ramban argue about this very thing. Do you want to read it? Yeah. Hmm. You don't have to go very far. I forgot that this was the place. First pasuk. It says, Zayra Azav Elohim. Right? In Elohim Mamre. In Elohim Mamre, that's the place. For who you say, Petach Ohel, the Chomayom. And he's sitting at the front, at the entrance of his tent. And in Pichol Mayom, Pichol Mayom, I don't know what that means exactly, uh, in like the, like the heat of the day. Uh, what do you mean by that? Why don't you say Bih? The core, the core, the true, the outer darkness when it's hot. <laughs> He's right. You'd think that he would be in the shade of his tent because it's very hot, right? But he was near the entrance of his tent. The shade of the tent, well, I don't know, maybe it's nicer because... If you're in a tent and the, and the heat of the sun is beating down, the inside of the tent could be pretty hot, like an oven. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to be in the heat itself in the sun either, because it'll burn you up, right? So you come to the entrance of the tent where there's a little bit of movement of air, but you still have shade, maybe. Mm -hmm. right? But of course you know the Midrashim that say Abraham Dafka sat there rather than just lying in the tent because he wanted to make sure if there are people passing by that he would bring them in like he did with these three people. But can we use so that makes it a much more, uh, what should I say, chesed orientation that he was sitting particularly there mm -hmm. rather than for comfort. Mm -hmm. Like an at the door, sitting on a chair. A doorman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was trying to see if anybody needed help, if anybody needed hospitality, mm -hmm. even though the Medrash says that this is the time right after his circumcision. Third day, then. Third day of the circumcision, mm -hmm. a person is pretty weak. We know that. How do you know that a person is pretty weak after third day of circumcision when he's an adult? Shechem. Shechem. Yeah. Shechem. Shechem. Yeah. Three days afterwards, when they were weak, that's when they were attacked by Shimon and uh, mm -hmm. Levi and, and maybe the brothers. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that was the plan, right? To make them weaker. So here's Abraham, who is how old? 100. 100 years old when he got the Brit Milah. Yes. That's pretty old. Right? So on the third day, he is not lying down like in bed, but he's sitting at the front of the entrance, according to the Medrash, to see if he could help people. That's pretty good. Right? What's Hashem doing? What's Hashem doing visiting him now? Three days after the Brit Milah? So some people say Hashem was teaching us here that one should visit the sick. You want to you want to emulate. You want to be like God in his actions, find out what God does, and follow in his ways. So here, Abraham is being visited by Hashem as when he is ill. So we should visit people and show kindness to them and concern for them and 
to mm. see if we can help them and be, uh, even even just uh, even just emotionally to support them when they're ill, right? Even if even if Hashem is not uh, willing um, to be visiting him, because we bring in in the in the guise of malachim, oh. according to all Hashem. <laughs> now this yeah. is the problem. This is the question, right? What kind of a visit? If we say that Hashem visited him in the costumes of these three people, then it's a strange kind of visit because he doesn't know that Hashem is visiting him, right? He's not visiting the sick in the same way. But after all, they do bring good tidings to him. So they are making him feel good, even though he's sick. But you know that there are others who say Hashem himself is visiting him. And he says to him, how are you feeling? Is there anything I can do for you? Can I change your bandages? It's so nice of you to do the Brit Milad that I asked you to do, even though you're 100 years old. He, to have my conversation. Mm -hmm. Abraham, in the meantime, looks out the door, and he sees these three people coming by. Mm -hmm. She says, God, uh, excuse me a minute, but I can't talk to you anymore right now. Could you could you wait? Uh, I have to go take care of these three people. Right? That's one meant right. Mm -hmm. According to that one, Hashem is really visiting the sick. And we learn something very, very amazing from it, right? That even Hashem's, the Shekhinah itself, the Shekhinah dialogue with you itself is not as vital as doing a mitzvah, Kinnulus Hasari. Charity, goodness to the poor, and that, by the way, turns out to be a halachic, a legal decision. It's not just a story. From this, we learn many things. If you're davening, right, and somebody needs help, then you stop davening and you get help, right? If you see a stranger walk into shul and he seems a little confused and you're davening, so you want to say, oh, I'm talking to God now, what am I, I can't be bothered by anybody else. No, you, you help the person, right? Or is there an emergency, like uh, in, in well, that's emergency is obvious, right? Yeah. We're talking about even kindness. I mean, this was not an emergency. It was just we're kindness. We're praying, man. This guy came on. Right. There's no question. I mean, we're talking about emergency. We're talking about less than emergency, just kindness. People. Right? I once asked Rabbi Gatib about that. Am I doing the right thing to a stranger in Shul? I went over to say hello to him. And it was in the middle of Sukkot Zimra, you know, during Dabin. He says, of course. I did. Yeah. I said, that's okay? He said, yeah, of course. We learned from Abraham Avinu that he told he tells God to wait a moment and mm -hmm. go and do what you have to do. In the middle of Amidah, for example? I don't know. I, never, yeah. I suppose that would work too. I don't know. Yeah. Right? So certainly, he, he was talking to God himself, right? Yeah. So you, yeah. can't get, yeah. you can't get much yeah. better than that. Closer than that. According to, excuse me? Can't get closer. Can't get closer than that. Can't get more impressive as, a, as an interruption than that, right? I mean, Okay, so let's see what, uh, what's going on here. Vayerilat, Loshon Rashi, Levakeret HaKholet. We know from here, why, what is he doing there, Rashi? Says, uh, Hashem, to come what visit the city. Amar Avichano Bar Chanina, Yom Shlishi Lemidato Aya, Uva Kadosh Baruch Hu V'Shanal Bo. It was the third day, Rabbi Chama Bar Chanina. It doesn't say, by the way, that this is the third day, but he says so. He feels that it was, right? Because we don't have the text telling you that. The text, we only know that the end of the last parsha, the last sentence of the last parsha is Abraham was 100 years old and Ishmael was 13 years old when he was, and all of the household when they circumcised themselves. End of parsha. New parsha. So we don't know if 14 years passed. We don't know if two days passed. We don't know if three days passed. But there's a tradition that this was three days later and he's visiting the city. Okay? Sha'albo means that he, um, hmm, he has a text of Rashi Bishlomo in his, as to his health, how he's doing. Vinei, shlosha anashim, he saw three people. Vahan malachim shebao elav bitmut anashim. Yeah, there are <coughs> angels who came looking like people. Shlosha, three of them. Echad, the Vaseret Sarah. One, to give the good news to some. Echad the Rabbot of Abraham, one, to heal the sick. So he was, I don't know if he was going to be a 
doctor or he was going to do hocus pocus to heal him, whatever. Ve'echad la'afoch et Zom, and one to overturn the city of Zom, destroy it. Urifael, if you want to know the one that healed Abraham, it's Rifael, she'yurafei et Abraham, halach misham la'atzil et Lot, the same angel who healed Abraham is the one who saved Lot. Because if you want to suggest, according to the Medrash, that each angel has a job, a certain kind of job. So that's why one of them was to tell Sarah, the other one was to heal Abraham, the other one was to destroy his dome. But there was also an angel who saved Lot. So they're suggesting that Raphael, who does healing, is also the one who saves. Uh, it's similar. Right? Saved his life, heals him. Because this is not two different missions. Okay, it was in a different place. That's an interesting thought. If it was two different jobs, at the same time, he wouldn't have been given two jobs. But since it was in two different places, and he was the kind of character who does healing and saving, and he was commanded separately, so that's one explanation. Or both of them are the same kind of job. So he has actually two possible explanations, right? Same kind of job would mean that even if they were commanded at the same time, and even if it was in the same place, that would work okay. And if you don't believe that the same kind of job is a good excuse, then I'll tell you that he was commanded separately in a separate place, and therefore it's two jobs for two different locations, com uh, occasions completely, right? I mean... Now you want to say what? Because uh, one of the uh, the Malachim was telling Sa telling Abraham and Sarah the news, right? Speaking the news. So what is not the same that went to Lot and speaking the news, bad news, or good news, or whatever, but it's speaking news. But we're talking about saving him. He's talking about saving him out. But it's I mean it's no. He didn't talk about saving him. He saved him. But he took him by his shoulder and pulled him out of stone. To save him, to save his life. It's not the same as talking to him and telling him good news. Right. Do you think it's the same thing? Mm, no, not fit totally in the, in the scene to me. Because he's giving some news. Maybe good or bad news, whatever, but it's a messenger. No? Burning some news. I know the job is because we say that uh, each Malachim has a job to do. It's, if they need two or three different labors, there are three Malachim. Doing right, right. And that's what they're talking about here. Mm -hmm. One of them is to give Sarah good news. One to destroy his dome, that's everything. That one to destroy his dome is not the same one as to tell good news, right? So you say that's two different mm -hmm. ones, right? Mm -hmm. One of them to heal Abraham. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to say that the one who's sent to heal Abraham is the same one who's sent to save Lot. And and you you may be right that the people who came, the three Malachim came together to Lot. And they said, we want to tell you that we're going to destroy the city of stone. So that's telling him news. But there was one of them, he says, that saved him, that actually took him out. Well, they really came to Malachim. Two Malachim. They, two uh, Malachim came? Two Malachim. Yeah, three. Oh. Three Malachim. Um, no, that's Abraham. We're talking about Lot. Oh. Yeah, two. Two, right. Yeah. So which one is missing? The one who told Sarah the good news. Right? One of them is destroy stone, and the other one is to save Lois. And to save is the same one who healed him. So apparently that's two, two out of three. Two and healing are the same. Right? Save Abraham. I mean, after Abraham could also die of, a, of an infection after a brief mila. So saving and healing is similar. Right? That's what they're saying. Makes sense. Okay. <laughs> and they ate. He gave them the food and they ate. They appear. They, they didn't really eat. Because Malachim don't eat. Right? Okay. 
They look like it. Now he's coming to the Baramba. Ubesefer Morin Uvuchim Neemar Ki Aparsha Klal Uprat. What do you mean by that? Rotol Amar Bitchila Amar Bayar Lav Davar Klal Vechazar Vir Dara Derech Prat Kitzad Aita. Oh, okay. So, so according to what we've said until now, Rashi and the Ramban, Hashem comes. And there are three malachim. Not the same thing. Hashem and three malachim. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. According to the Rambam, the way you read the Parsha is, <coughs> Hashem came to Abraham mm -hmm. and he's sitting in the tent. How did Hashem appear to Abraham? Here are three people coming. That's the appearance of Hashem to Abraham. That's the way Hashem appeared to him. Not separate. Hashem and the malachim. The way he appeared to him is the three malachim. Klal uprat. Right? Amara Katu, Tichila Kinirai Lav Hashem Marota Nebua. It first tells you Hashem came to him in this uh, prophecy. How did Hashem appear to him? And he raised his eyes, and there are three people. That's the appearance of God to him. Right? And he goes and says, If you please do not pass by my house, right? If I if I have pleasing in your eyes and your eyes in singular, elecha, elecha, one person, he's a he's appealing to one. Zesipur Masha Maramarianu bo alechat mehem agadol shivahem. This is what he's dreaming. This is what he's doing in his in his vision. Speaks to the biggest one among them. Vim im ba mare lo nira elav lo niru elav rakan hashim ochlim basar eichamar vayar elav hashem. All right? He's saying it's bizarre. We never saw anywhere in the Torah that Hashem would appear to somebody, that the Torah would say Hashem appeared to him, and then tell him this picture that he is seeing in a vision, and that they're eating food, and they're so on and so on, and that all is the vision that he has of Hashem appearing to him. He says that we never saw anywhere, right? We don't have it in any other prophecy. So therefore, right? Sarah was not making any cake. Below us, Abraham then Bakar the Gamlo Tzachakat and she didn't laugh and uh, he didn't make any food well, for them. Why, why couldn't she laugh? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, in the dream she could have laughed. What's wrong? Yeah. Why not? I mean, I don't know what's wrong with him. Raka Kol Mare. Okay, so let's say, yeah, yeah, he, uh, he understands. I don't think he's. It, it's it. true. It didn't really happen as it is said. It happened in the dream as it is said. But, but something. Uh, what's what wrong is, with that? What is forcing the Rambam to say this? So, because one doesn't see Malachim. He says so in Maran Ruchim. One never sees Malachim. It's in Perik. Does he say where? I, I, I learned it. Sefer uh, Maran Ruchim, number three. Uh, the footnote is Chelek Beit, Perik Vim Mem Gimel. I mean, okay. he says people don't see Malachim. And it's not possible to see Malachim. And they're, right. they're, they're ephemeral, non physical beings. And therefore, whenever the Torah says that somebody encountered a Malach, it is in a dream. So it's very interesting because if you look at all the stories of Malachim, some of them are a little difficult. Like Elisha, for example. Like Elisha, like, uh, like uh, what's his name? Uh, Manoach, uh, the, the father of uh, Shimshon, with the mother. Yeah, so the mother sees a Malach, so that's a vision. She comes back and tells her husband. He says, let's go back there. Maybe he'll appear to me also. So they go back there, and he appears, and they both have a dream that the Malach is there. And he says, let yeah, me yeah. help you. Let me give you something. So he says, no, no, what do you mean? Don't ask me my name. And, right? And they dream that they made a Mizbeach and the fire comes up and the Malach goes up in the flames. That's all the dream. Yeah, but what about Jacob? When um, he wake up in the dream, it's, like, it's, it's not working properly. The Malach. Oh, you mean the fight? In the fight with the Malach. So that's for real. Well, there it says Ish. There it says a man. How come you don't know this name, for real. How come he was limping after that? It was a matter of how come he was limping. Well, I, you don't have to say it's a malach. There. It says Ish. We say it's a malach because that's what you've been taught since kindergarten. 
But I very each email. Well, who cares? Who was it? It's not a, it's a, it was what, what do you mean? Who was it? Well, it was not. It was not a Shem, or it's not a Mila. Mm-hmm. So who was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who was it? <laughs> there are four billion people on Earth. Oh, come on. No, but I mean, we don't see any 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 more talking about that. Oh, he the man that we are. Well, we're talking to Jacob. He go went to whatever place. Well, we don't see nothing about it. So we can see Ish, okay, but but you understand that Ish is not. Uh, what about what about Yosef? When he's always looking for his brothers. Oh. Yes. Uh, okay, and Ish again. Why you say you Ish? So why you say that one is? Also, people say that a lot. Of. Yep. Why? Because we don't know who he is. I mean, because he uh, looks like a, a man. I don't know. I know. I mean, I I understand I, because I, you I want know. him. But if I say to you, it was a man, and he says, "Where are my brothers?" and he says, "I don't know your brothers, but I heard somebody here speaking that they went down to Doisheim. Go, go find him there. That has to be a malach. Who cares? No, Why not John Doe? But this guy Eliyahu. got all Pinky. the answers that uh, Joseph needed. So, so? that's impossible that one man. How about if he spoke to 1,400 people and everybody said, I don't know, I don't know, and he found one person who said, yeah, I remember somebody. I mean, he's looking for them, so why, why make a, a supernatural idea out of it? People like it because, because they want to show that God's hand is working all the time, getting him to his brothers, you know what I mean? He could have, he could have looked around, he could have not found his brothers, and he could have said, what am I going to do? I have to go back to Abba. I have to go back to Yaakov and tell him that I couldn't find the brothers. That would have been the end of the story. He never would have been sold to the tribe. He wouldn't have had the whole story. Right? Could have been. If he didn't find him, he didn't find him. What can you do? Right? How would he know he went to Joy Jack? So Hashem people like the idea one. that Hashem is one. manipulating the things behind the scenes, wanted them to be confronted with him, wanted them to make a choice, not that they should make a choice to sell him. He was hoping they didn't. But... What, what, what giving them a chance what, to do one one thing or the other, they choose to do the bad thing, and Hashem gave that opportunity, so he sent the Malach. But, but that's only because he liked the story. I mean. But what did he what, what did he want him, what did he want the brothers to do? To fall in love with him again and to make peace. But how would he have gone down to the train? Wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> they went to be trying because of Sinat Achim. Yes. But that if they wouldn't yeah. have had seen Atachim, they wouldn't have gone to Mitzrayim. But then how would we have... How would have we would have lived in Canaan, in a land that is not ours. But that's the way... That that right? Your, that's your children will live in a land that is not <laughs> theirs, that wasn't which Canaan that was, that not theirs. That wasn't, that wasn't Hashem's promise to Abraham. Oh, but there's not theirs there, yeah. The Mepharshim talk about this, by the way. It, it could have been also in Lavan's house, by the way. Lavan could have been the place in which they could have had 400 years of stay. But Hashem, according to one Medrash, Hashem looked at that and he said, uh-oh, I better get him out of here because the Jewish people will never last for 400 years in Lavan's house. In Mitzrayim, they might last because there is physical slavery. Here in Lavan's house, he would embrace him and he would suck him in and after a while there would be no Jewish people. Right? So I cannot let the be... The prophecy of 400 years will be, they will be in the land that theirs cannot be in Lavan's house. So he took him back. I'm not, I'm not and he comes to him and he says, Yaakov, it's time to go home. Because he saw what was going on. I'm not, we're not on the topic. I'm not very, but, yeah. I'm not very impressed with Sita Hill Rambam. With other, with other Which part? That, that, that any people don't see Malachim. Why? Because it doesn't sound right to me. And that, that's what who am I? Well, it doesn't know. sound right to us I, I'm because, nobody. because we, no, 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 I mean, <laughs> no, it doesn't sound right to us. I mean, the, it's a natural reaction that you and Eliyahu and most people have, and I do too, because we are programmed from the time we're four years old, you understand, to, to see this as though the Torah yeah. wrote but not only uh, that angels came. Not only four years old. Well, the Torah wrote uh, that angel came to Yosef. That's four, what everybody thinks. Forty-four years old. Everybody, uh, yeah, but I mean, I, once I mean, we are programmed, then we don't change the way we look at things. I mean, it's not easy. The Rambam says, wait a moment. But the, Malachim are metaphysical beings. Malachim 
are, are not even exactly, he's not sure about beings. They are the, the way God, God does things in the world. If I say to you that God split the sea, right? So how did he split the sea? Well, wind. So if I say to you, yeah, there was wind and so on. But let's say I would say to you that, that there's an angel that God sent to split the sea. That makes you feel better. I mean, it makes you feel better. Or So it's an expression. An expression that God has agents. God has powers okay, but that he sends out to do things. Go back to the do beginning. They have to be things? To the beginning. Which Why Adam Arishon came back to planet Eden if he knew that uh, the goal of the guy in Eden was a, a, a malak with a sword and whatever. No. Well, then he couldn't come back. He could come back. He could come back. He could come back. He could not because the sword would cut him in pieces. Yeah, good yeah, because he was a, a malak at the, at, the, at the entrance of Gan Eden. So, that's not malak. So what does that mean? What does that mean to you? Oh, maybe so Adam, Adam but there is no malak here. There is no person. There is no right. so here. Start, so try to go. And what would happen? <laughs> try to go. And <laughs> rust this. <laughs> so the, I mean, I, if I say to you, I mean, so, so we do not conceive of anything, it makes us feel better that there's this being there with wings and sword, right? So that makes him not come back. But if I would tell you that what the Torah means to say is that God made it impossible to him to, for him to go through because he put a force field there that he couldn't come in. Now they, now they don't understand force fields in the Torah because nobody talks about force fields. Do you know what a force field is? No, what, no. what do you do? Bang against it. Oh. He couldn't go. He couldn't go. He would get a shock. Who knows? I don't know. Oh, whatever. Okay. I mean, listen, you could ask the Rambam <coughs> a lot of questions. Yes. But. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Oh, I, I, I saw my, this was my, was that my privilege? You, of course. Yes. You, you've got the Rambam on your side. No, I don't. I mean the Ramban. The Ramban on your side. Ramban. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yes. He, he put Kruvin, no less, on, on, uh, Kruvin, we don't even know exactly what they are, right? Kruvin? Kruvin, the son of Maybe Malak, one of the Malak lions or angels. Yeah, okay, yeah, anyway. Right. All right, so let's look at the Rambam com com uh, on. So he, the Ramban, is complaining. Because if it's true that this was all a vision, then it would have to follow that he didn't get meat, really, and, it, and the Chsara was not baking bread, and that he didn't go and get food for them, Shmuel and that she didn't laugh. Shmuel didn't, Shmuel didn't right? Mm -hmm. That everything is a, is a vision. So what's wrong with that? Why can't you have a vision that she is baking bread and that he got food? I mean, it's okay. That's part of the dream. It's okay. V'im kein ba'chalomaze So what's bothering him is not so much that it's impossible to dream this, but... This dream then would have so many details and so many little parts of the story that are t totally unnecessary, right? To tell us the message that Abraham was getting that, that dreams, it, it sounds like a normal dream like you and I have. It doesn't sound like a dream of God talking to him and bringing a message, right? Like, like the, 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 the Chalamot HaShekar, he means, he means, Now, I want to tell you, of course, if, if you ask me about this story, why do we need all these details? Why do we need all these details? Why? Right? So I would answer you that you do need all these details because we learn a lot from these details. I mean, it's okay. If Abraham has a dream that he saw three people and he ran after them even though he was sick and he brought them in and he and he gave them food, right? And she's baking bread, and he's making sure that she gets food, that they get food. And he serves them, even though he's sick. And that's part of the dream. So what would you say? What kind of a person has a dream like that? A normal person. I don't have dreams that I go out of my way to do fantastic heroic things and to sacrifice myself. I really have dreams. Who knows what kind of dreams? I don't usually remember my dreams. But he has a dream. So let's say God is not making him dream this, right? God is appearing to him in the in the oh. in the form of these angels. Mm -hmm. 
Right. He reacts right. to them in his dream. He reacts to them in his dream in the way that the dream is. He could have dreamt. He could have dreamt. He saw three people saying that they could, he could have said in his dream, to hell with you. He dreamed. It's all a dream. Right? God didn't make him dream that he went and gave them food. That's Abraham's psyche, Abraham's unconscious talking. So if a person has an unconscious that is so kind, then we should learn something from Abraham. That's good. I think the detail is not, is not unimportant. You remember Rabbi Wine used to tell a story about uh, a mashgiach, a person in the yeshiva of, in Chicago where he was as a child, as a young man. And he says, to give an example, because this man was very, very old already, and he was already unable to think. It was Alzheimer's disease, and no, it was it dementia, maybe. Way from that brain. It was dementia. I don't know. So he, was, he, he, he couldn't really do anything much anymore. So he was walking around the yeshiva. He wasn't teaching anymore. He was just he walking around the yeshiva, and the words that came out of his mouth were uh, Rambams and Chumash. He was just mumbling Torah. Right, to mumbling Torah. Same thing with Rav Salvechik. Rav Salvechik, it's hard to imagine Rav Salvechik with all this incredible genius and creative Torah, right? When he became older, I think he had severe um, Parkinson's disease, possibly, but he was definitely demented. He couldn't, he couldn't understand or recognize people. And he was sitting there mumbling. And if you listen to his mumbling, he was saying, he was, he was just uh, Rambams were coming out of his mouth. Unconscious. So what kind of a person has unconscious expressions of Torah, right? A person who is through and through with Torah so much that it's part of his blood, I mean, right? So when he's not even conscious, he's talking Torah. Okay. Right? I mean, so Abraham, Abraham, who's unconscious and having a dream, is dreaming about doing chesed. That's a pretty right. nice dream. So but, we can learn from but, that, no? But, okay, Hashem wants... Hashem wants to tell him a good news. Hashem wants to just say, okay. He wants to tell him good news, and he wants to talk to him about Sodom. Yeah. Those two things. Okay. Okay. So okay. he does that while he's dreaming. So when dreaming, he doesn't want him to, or doesn't make him do, doesn't make him have this dream. That's the purpose of the dream. To make him have a dream of the three people. Yeah. That the three people are there. And, and Abraham then dreams that he responded to them. The, 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 you mean to say, you think that the dream is planted in his head that he responded to them and that he gave them bread and food as well? That's, that's the plant? So he's part of the dream? You think? They went to Lot's house? No, 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 no. no. That's, that's another matter. Abraham then is, we'll see. Okay. Abraham then wakes up. He, and he... And he uh, but at the end of the story, gone. these guys come and, and, and the, guy, the guy, so, the people, so then Lot is having watch a dream. Him. So Lot is Boy, having this guy is a beautiful guy, he's a nice guy. So, so then Lot is having a dream. Another dream, man. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Let's <laughs> keep going. Okay. Let's keep going, okay? So he says, I don't like these all these details. Kimato elekli wrote low. Leha wrote low. What's the, what's the use of showing him all this? So I'm suggesting there maybe is. Ha! Now we're talking about the man who fought with Abraham, with ya Yaakov. Shakol Maren. The Rambam, would you believe? The Rambam said even there that this was all a prophecy. Dati. Lama Hayat The Pinky's question. How could I how could it be if it's a dream that he is now limping while awake? Now that's the uh, um, what's what's the word for that? Psychosomatic, Psychosomatic illness. Psychosomatic. Psychosomatic. Yeah, if I, if I have a dream that I broke my leg, I might wake up <laughs> walking with a limp. <laughs> well, yeah, with a headache, right? you can wake up. See, so he says, what a Right? All right? Uh, by the way, how do we know how much was in the dream? One second. When he says, right? <laughs> Where, where, where? No, 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 no. Where in Yaakov? No, 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 no. Oh, he's going on. He's yeah. going on to to discuss that, right? He he got he got. Panim of panim, vatim vatim nafshi. Vayikra Yaakov shem makom ahu. Vayishal Yaakov mayom 
I see. It does seem to say that the, the sun comes up and he passed Penuel and he is limping. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. So he did limp. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so he says, how could that be? Right. Why does he say, and I saw God face to face mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and my life was saved? If that wasn't the real, thing. The real seeing of a malach. When you have a vision, you don't have to be afraid that you might die because you saw too much. A vision is a vision. I mean, it's, but it's a, if it's a nightmare, it's a nightmare. You're, yeah, but you're frightened. Yeah, but he says he's going to die because I saw God. Right. No? Okay. Right. I mean, yeah. Well, we, yeah. And he already had seen a greater vision than this. Why should he be afraid? He already saw God himself in a vision. So why would he be afraid that he's going to die because he saw a malach okay, I, 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 in, in a vision? I said, I said that, that I want to say Medrash Rambam. Yeah, you, therefore, you, you, you are convinced by all these arguments, right? Yes. Now he says, Vihine. Vihine. Lefida to. According to the Rambam's vision, he says, idea, Zot, Yitztarich Lomar, Kibi'inyan Lot, Kilo Ba'u Malachim El Beito. They didn't act, what? Wait, I mean, what, what does Zot say about the cliffs of Sinai? I mean, they came to him, and, and he, and he Didn't said, he take them into your cell? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No so why does he say lo ba lo malachim el beto velo afala hem matzot lo yochelu? Oh oh oh! There I agree that it really didn't happen. He says. Avala kol ayam mare. I agree. No. Oh. Yeah. According to according to the Rambam, I'm sorry. According to the Rambam, it would appear what you asked me about the lot is that it really didn't happen in reality, right? He saw malachim in his dream. And he draw saw malachim that he saw that he saw in the dream that he took them to his house, and he saw in the dream that he gave them matzot to eat, and he would see a, in the dream that the people of the city were coming to attack him, all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the malachim he dreams that the malachim tells him you better run away from here because we're going to destroy the city, and he goes. <laughs> Right? <laughs> All of this is vision. Oh, so he's got a problem. Here's a real good problem, right? Let's say you want to say yes. Lot is a very righteous person, you want to say, and he has the possibility of having a visionary prophecy. Fine. Let's say I... I, I I have trouble with this, he says, but let's say I say that's true. But how is it possible for the city people in Sdom, who are very bad, right, for them to have a vision, a vision that they see Malachim? <clears throat> now he's missing the point, I think, right? Because he, he seems to feel that, so Lot is getting a vision of Malachim and it's not really Malachim, he's having a vision, a prophecy a vision, right? But the city people are attacking the house. Why are they attacking the house? He's having only a vision. They don't see the vision. So why are they attacking the house? That's his question. Right? If there were real malachim looking at people, then you would understand that the people would see them just like Lot would see them. So they would attack the house. Right? But obviously the Rambam's answer is that the attack on the house was part of the dream. Yeah. And that's no problem. Right? But anyway, okay. Who, who would tell them that how that people came to his house? He's only dreaming this. There's no people. Right? 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 The whole thing would have to be a vision, including come and go and hurry up and leave and so on. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> and if it's all a vision, when the vision is over, Lot is still sitting in stone. I mean, what part is real? 
And what part is this? That's what he says. Sit on this mode is right. Aval yachshov shehayu al maasim naasim elehem kama marim bechol davar vedavar mare. He would think, right? Aval yachshov. Is that the rabbi? Maybe the description of Shita was a mare too. That's right. Right. אבל יחשוב שהיו המעשים נעשים מאליהם והמאמרים בכל דבר ודבר מראה ואלו הדברים סותרים הכתוב אסור לשאול מה מי says this contradicts the 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 actual scriptures and you're not allowed to listen to people like the Rambam who say this אף כי להאמין בהם or even to believe them wrong 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 false terrible okay Pinky agrees with the Ramban. No. I agree with you, Ramban. <laughs> <laughs> However, you wouldn't go so far as to burn the books of the Ramban. Yeah, yeah, he, he, oh. he got, he so got he, problems. He's in, entitled to... He's a big... Oh, and, and You're a very democratic man. And, Good. And, 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 and he says a lot of other things which I don't understand, but I'm not saying that he's wrong. I'm saying that I, I don't understand that. That's me. My, my deficiency. Ah, we're going to see a compromise in a moment. Next piece. Uve mm-hmm. Emet. In truth, in truth now, the Ramban is going to admit, according to, there's a footnote here, we'll see in a moment. Ki kol makom shi uskar bakatuv riyat malach, o dibur malach, o bamare, hu bamare. Every time it says in the Torah, generally speaking, now he's, he's switching his position. Every time it says a malach spoke or somebody saw a malach, it is in a vision. O bachalom, or in a dream. Ki hahergeshim lo yasigu amalachim, because our senses do not appreciate to perceive malachim. Avalo bimarot anuvuah. This is not, however, prophecy. Yeah, he's going to explain in a minute, right? Is that not prophecies? Because, for example, Manoach is not a prophet when he saw when he feels that he saw a Malach, right? He's not a prophet. Prophet is Eliyahu and Navi, right? Yeshayahu is a prophet, right? Moshe Rabbeinu is a prophet. The 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 people who see Malachim in a, in a chalom are not prophecy. Ki hamasigli rot Malach o diburo einenu Navi, the person who appreciates, perceives a seeing of a malach, or he is speaking, is not a navi. She'en ha'davar k'mosha arav gorev, gozer. Ah, the Rav, Rambam meaning, the Rambam himself said in the Morin of Uchim that you should know that any time it says the Nevi'im When the Vua comes to them, some of them see a Malach, and some of, se- some of them see God, even though it was through a Malach. All right, so he doesn't believe like the Rambam. The Rambam says that any time a, 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 a person sees the form of a, nav- of a Malach in his dream speak to him, it's not prophecy. Okay, he doesn't believe that the Rambam is correct. Kikol Navi Zulat Moshe Rabbeinu Nevuato al yedei malach, and every malach, every navi. This is still the Rambam talking, I suppose, right? That every navi. Yeah, that every navi other than Moshe, his prophecy is through an angel. The Rambam said, right? He doesn't agree with that. The kvar amru ben Adiel imhu adifimine ge imhu nevi'e viihu. Lo Navi. What does that mean? V'chein Amru? In the Megillah. Inhu, Chagai, Zechariah, Malachi, Heim G'dolim B'Daniel, Sheheim Nevi'im V'hu Lo Navi. Daniel was not a Navi, they say, because Zechariah and Chagai were raised. 
they were greater than Daniel because they are prophets and he is not. Why? Because he is not meaning meaning what? That he saw Malach? And, and we didn't write his book, Daniel's book, among the books of the prophets because he had dealings with Gabriel, which is a Malach. Mm-hmm. Even though he spoke to him while he was awake, since a person who sees a Malach is not a Navi. Oh, and of course, Hagar, that's another person, right? Mm-hmm. Hagar saw and spoke to a Malach, right. so she is not a prophetess. Right. That was not God speaking to her, but a Malach. He wants to, the Rav, the Rambam wanted to say that the excuse there is there was a bad call. There was a bad call, and not a Malach, because if it was a Malach, according to the Rambam, she would be a prophetess, right? Because according to him, everybody but Moshe spoke to angels. Mm-hmm. That's amazing, no? The Pasuk, the Torah, makes <coughs> sure that you understand that the prophecy of Moshe is different from the prophecy of the Avot, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Va'erayel Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Be'el Shaddai. God himself said that, right? V'zeh, Shem Mishmot HaKadosh Laboro, it's one of the names of the names of the God who is the creator. Einenu, Kinui lemalach. It is not an angel. Right? This is the Ramban talking, right? Because he says you don't want to agree with the Rambam that all the prophets who spoke to angels are, are other than Moshe. Right? What is the difference between Moshe and all the other prophets? All the other Nevi'im saw through some kind of a glass that isn't sh- shiny, that isn't polished. Hadalu diktiv anochi chazon hir beiti v'ubiyad anavim adame u'moshe ra'a mitoch aspaklar mitzuk tzechet. And he, Moshe, did see from a polished glass. Hadalu diktiv v'tmunat Hashem yavit that he sees so-called the image of God. And he, the Ramban, says, there is no way that any of the other angel, any of the other prophets, did receive prophecy from a Malach, which the Ramban said is true for all but Moshe. He disagrees. Da Diber Eli Bedavar Hashem Remor 21. Footnote 21 has in Malachim. Who said that? Do you know who said that? Somebody said to somebody, I want you to know that I'm a, 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 a prophet like you, and an angel spoke to me in God's word. Micha. Who said that? Who? Uh, Micha. Micha? No, no, what's it? Who no. said that? That would sound like God does speak to somebody through a malach, right? That, that, because that's what that person says. I'm a navi just as good as you, and a malach spoke to me the God's word, right? So don't be confused by that sentence, because it sounds like it supports the Rambam, right? The Rambam says, Ki perusho gam ani navi kamocha, v'yodea ani sh'amalach sh'diber elai v'dvar shemhu. Oh boy. That's, that's a pretty sneaky way out, right? I am a Malach just like you, and I know that that which looked like a Malach is really God speaking to me. Well, 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 well. What about Bilam? Right? We're talking about all kinds of stories about Malach, right? 
So what about Bilam? Shamar Vata im Rabbe Necha Shuvali. Ani lo alachti ad Shamar li Hakadosh Baruch Hu kum lechitam. Vata omer shachzor. Kach hu umnuto. Lo kach Amar la Avraham. I'm sorry. What? What? So what? Say something and then reverse it. Say something I like and go with them. Who's? Bilam the chain that I am. I wouldn't have gone if Hashem would not have said to me. Hashem spoke to me, said go. Go. And, yeah. but and now, I, now you and Rabbi, Rabbi the Mala and say, go back, right? And that kahu umnuto. That's the meaning. What? That's the way God behaves. Right. He's being sarcastic. Um, well, he he believes that, and may, maybe maybe the um, so. So, so, really is a good excuse. so, so what is he? Is he getting mm -hmm. prophecy? Is Bilam a prophet? Right, so according to the Rambam, that's the same Nabi Nabuah. That's Nabuah Nabuah, right? According to the Ramban, according to the Ramban, when he says Nabuat doesn't come, does not come from Malachim, then why does Abraham stop the Akedah? I mean, no, 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 no. God spoke to him to do the Akedah, and then an angel comes and, and tells him not to stop. He says, well, I don't listen to, Mal to angels, angel, I listen to God. Angel represented God. So what? Yeah, but. I mean, and this is my. And is it a nevuah? Is it a prophecy that he's... Yeah, boy, probably, the Ramban says nevuah doesn't come with angels. The Ramban, the Rambam says that all nevuah ad other than Moshe come through okay, angels. Was, was Avram dreaming? Did Avram dream the Akedah? Well, that would be... That so in, 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 in the same would, way, he that was be, dreaming. That would be... Is that, is that the ex extent to which the Rambam is going here? Yeah. Is that a problem? It's a terrible problem. Yeah. Because this is, this is a tense and this is the most difficult Nisayan. Uh, so you mean, I mean, a, a, a subconscious trial <laughs> of this intense type and his readiness to do it subconsciously is not a test? Not, not as much as a real, as if it were real. So why does the Torah say Malach at the end? Hashem speaks to him and tells him what to do, and then he goes and does it. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily appear to people. Why doesn't God, but God appeared to him himself before. More than once. But it's not a contradiction. Hashem spoke to him and says, Lechoka. You can't Hashem say says to him, I'm going to bless you. Hashem says to him, you're going to have this land. Hashem says to him, no malach, right? Hashem says to him, you're going to have children. Yeah. And then he says, says, you're going to have, and then you go listen to your wife and send away Haga. And Hashem says to him, sacrifice, sacrifice your son. And then all of a sudden the malach comes and now, says, don't you touch that boy. Now that, that, now that would be a contradiction. Hashem told him you're going to have uh, your descendants will be true Yisraeli. And then he says Well, we know that that's a contradiction and it's a problem. Abraham did not choose to use the argument. He could have. Yeah. Right? He said to him, Hashem, you're not making sense, Hashem. Mm -hmm. So he said to me to do it and do it. Remember last week we learned. Yeah. Remember last week we learned that Abraham was worried. Remember, he didn't have any children, even though God spoke to him and said, You're going to have children. Yeah. And then he says to him, You have much reward. We read last week. Yeah. And he says, I'm not having children. What good is any reward for me? Right? So everybody asks, What do you mean? You're talking to God. He just told you he's going to have children a little, a few times. So what do you say? I'm not having children. So the answer was, He thought. 
that he was not worthy of the promise that Hashem had given him, that he had become unworthy. A long time ago, Hashem said to me, I was a good guy. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe the reason I'm not having children, I'm 99 years old, I'm not having children because Hashem decided that I'm not going to get, get, get the promise that he gave me. I don't deserve it. That's what we had trouble with last week, remember? But that's what we had said. That's why he can get away with saying, that, you know, I'm not having children to Hashem, right? So is it not possible that Hashem tells him after he has a child, Hashem, according to Abraham's psyche, he could say, well, I guess now Hashem thinks I shouldn't have any the child, so he's telling me to sacrifice the son. But that, that, I think to That's me, bizarre. To me, that, 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 that cheapens the story. I mean, it's, it's very strange as it is, but that... It is strange as it is. So what is strange to you is what, that he didn't argue? Um... Let's assume you are right. It contradicts. It is a it is a definite paradox. Hashem gave him his son, told him his son was going to be the progenitor of his people, of his children, and now he's telling him sacrifice. So is he supposed to understand from that that he will not end up sacrificing him because it is not possible? If that were the case, that would also cheapen the test for you, right? Yes. Because he would say, all I have to do is go through the motions, and I know it's not going to happen. Yeah, and then, and then, and then, no, we won't come to that. So that's a little odd as well, right? Yes. Why go through the exercise? Yes. Did we get carried away here? What happened? Oh, Hagar, yes? Yeah, so Rambam says it's not a vatko. Um, oh, we talked about that. Yeah. Right, if you go back, so that's the way God does. He changed his mind. Okay, Abraham. Right? So there, oh, oh, didn't Bilam say, yeah, so Bilam says to Malach, okay, God does these kinds of things. He changed his mind, so I'll go back, okay. Just like he changed his mind, didn't he tell Abraham to sacrifice his son and then send the Malach to tell him not to? Lamudhu Lomar Davar, Umalach Machzir Hashem, Hashem does that all the time. He sends something, somebody, to, a message, and then he sends a malach to change the mind, to change the message. That's pretty interesting. Kidvar Hashem Hu. The first time that Hashem speaks to somebody himself, it's not equivalent <coughs> to the second speech that he has through a Malach. But but the Nevi'im understand, they could tell when the words of Amalek are God's words. Wait, is he telling me that he's saying what the Rambam would say? Or? Uh, uh, no, or no. What he says. No, what he says. Mm. I don't know. Uvitchila vayikra rabba amru vayikra el Moshe lo ke Abraham. The Abraham katu ba yikra malach Hashem al Abraham sheimit min hashemayim hamalach kolei ve'adibur midaber. What what he had said about Moshe, remember, is that Moshe is not like Abraham. Abraham, it says that an angel called to him the second time from heaven, and Malach called and Hashem spoke. Hadibur, meaning Hashem spoke, I suppose. 
The Ram Hacha Amar Kadosh Baruch Hu Ani Hu Akorei Vani Hu Amadaber. However, Hacha in Moshe, I am the one who calls and I'm the one who speaks. With Moshe, Hashem did not speak to him through a malach, but only himself. 